Bert Middleton, The Gap Killer, back again. This is part two of my review of the American College of Rheumatology's uh, new gout guidelines, which you've probably heard a lot about. And in the first video, we covered um, the first three of 16 slides by of the Medscape post uh, summary about the American College of Rheumatology's new gout guidelines. And we're going we're gonna to move into um, slide number four right now. Um, but before we do, I just wanted to make a point of saying in this third slide, you know, the th one slide out of 16, actually 15 slides about all of this talks a little bit about what to eat, what not to eat, getting some exercise, and stopping smoking. The rest of this is all dedicated to pharmaceutical drugs. So by design, I want to point this out, by design, they are putting so much more emphasis on giving you drugs after you've already got the disease, rather than talking about what you could be doing to improve your health and not get gout at all, which is what I'm all about, and that's why I'm doing this. So here we go. Um, this was slide three of 16. Now slide number four. Pharmacologic management. And I said in the first video that I was going to deliberately um, keep myself under control even though I get very passionate about uh, the information or the misinformation that gets promoted on, on these types of things. So I'm just going to try to um, deliberately offer uh, another side to the story here for you to um, research and make a decision on your own for. So that's the whole purpose I'm doing this. So pharmacologic management. In patients with a potential diagnosis of gout, a number of initial steps should be taken. These include patient education, considering other causes of hyperuricemia, eliminating non-essential prescription medications associated with hyper, hyperuricemia, and evaluating the disease burden to determine the appropriate course of treatment. Management of acute attacks will be discussed later. However, urate lowering therapy, ULT, should be considered in patients with one or more TOFI, um, or m more than two attacks per year, chronic kidney disease, CKD, stage two or worse, or a history of urolithiasis. The TFP recommends initiating ULT and with either allopurinol, allopurinol or febusostat. Probenicid is recommended. <clears throat> probenicid is recommended as an alternative first-line agent when either allopurinol or febusostat is contraindicated or when a patient has demonstrated intolerance to at least one of the agents. ULT can be started during an acute gout attack. The serum urate, can, the serum urate level should be monitored every two to five weeks during ULT titration and every six months after the target serum level six, um, below six milligrams per deciliter has been reached. Okay. So let's kind of break that down a little bit. Um, to begin with, patient education. That's what I feel like I'm all about, <laughs> okay? I mean, when you start to realize that uric acid is what's causing all the pain in your joints, acid is acid. Alkaline is the opposite of acid. Rather than trying to load you up with all of these different drugs to um, cover up the symptoms, you really need to change your the pH of your body chemistry is, is basically what it comes down to. So patient education, I feel like they're missing the boat, <laughs> to put it simply. Um, considering other causes of hyperuricemia, well, this whole thing is designed to make you think that you need that only by eating red meat and seafood and drinking too much alcohol are the causes of hyperuricemia. When they focus primarily, they focus completely on uric acid, they need to be considering the total overall acidity of the inner body environment. 
So there are other causes. There are toxic chemicals. There, in way back in the 1800s, it was lead poisoning. Not too much meat. Not too much alcohol. Um, there are so many different contributing factors to gout that have nothing to do with what you eat. Um, so yes, there are other causes of hyperuricemia that we need to look at. Eliminating non-essential prescription medications associated with hyperuricemia. How did anybody get on something that wasn't essential in the first place? Um, need some more explanation there, I think. Um, evaluating the disease burden to determine the appropriate course of treatment. The disease burden, you know, uh, that needs further clarification. Um, maybe in their entire guidelines, this is just a summary, maybe they talk about that more. Um, management of acute attacks will be discussed later. Urate lowering therapy considered in patients with one or more TOFI. I had TOFI. Four in this finger, three in this finger, and uh, two in this hand, and one of the toes in my right foot. Um, so, you know, I know all about that. And when they talk about um, urolithiasis, that's kidney stones, uric acid kidney stones, chronic kidney disease. I'd like you to know that I have only one kidney, so I know some about this. Um, now, when they get, go into all these urate lowering therapies, you know, they're really talking about allopurinol. They're talking about xanthane oxidase inhibitors. And so they are trying to reach a target um, uric acid UA, UA level of below 6 milligrams per deciliter. That's about all I want to say for that one. Let's move on to the next one because it kind of gets further into this whole pharmaceutical drug thing. So this next one, number 5 of 16, allopurinol dosing. Starting allopurinol, starting allopurinol dose should not exceed 100 milligrams per day, and patients with CKD or stage four of stage four or higher should be started at 50 milligrams per day. Dosages should be titrated up every two to five weeks to achieve target serum uric acid, and can go beyond 300 milligrams a day as long as the patient is educated and monitored for adverse events. Screening for the HLA-B5801 allele, which is associated with a high risk of severe allopurinol hypersensitivity reaction, should be considered in high-risk individuals such as Koreans and an, with an estimated glomular filtration rate of below 60 milliliters minimum um, 1.73 M2, I don't know what that means, or those of Han Chinese or Thai ancestry. I don't want to go long on this one right here, but there is an important part here. Target serum uric acid level can go above 300 milligrams a day as long as the patient is educated and monitored for adverse events. One of the well-known and well-documented things that happens on allopurinol, if you haven't discovered this for yourself already, is that when you first start it up, you will get more gout attacks. So that's why a lot of times they start you off with um, uh, allopurinol and colchicine to kind of counteract that. So let's... This video is already eight minutes long, so I'm going to leave it right there. We're going to pick up on the next video. Um, the next videos are going to go faster. There's not as much to this. Um, they just kind of drone on and on and on, uh, trying to convince you that you've got gout, you're a victim, and you're going to have to take their drugs. So I'll see you on the next video, part three of the Gout Killer Review of the American College of Rheumatology New Gout Guidelines. Thanks.